All right, guys, today I wanted to talk about some of my Grail EDC gear and how the grind never stops. So first off, it's, just, it's worth clarifying, I think, what does Grail EDC gear really mean? Essentially, what I'll be going over in this video, whether it be knives, guns, watches, pens, stuff that I have sat there, looked at, oohed and odd, and said, I want to add that to my EDC collection. And moreover than just going over it and showing off stuff that I have, I want to go over why this stuff became Grail in the first place. So for me, I'll start off with knives, probably the bread and butter of this whole channel and what you guys are all here for. So first off, when it comes down to the Grail knives, I chose a couple of them. Of course, there are many and I have videos detailing all of them, but I think the two that have really rose to preeminence with me are going to be my custom Gavco Nurse and my Hinder XM18. Now, both these guys are purple and that is a pretty good reason of why I actually like them, but overall, um, yeah, these guys are fantastic because both of them are drop shot clothes, super smooth, and I think that both of them, for me, fit the bill for EDC very well. You can choke up, you can use them very well, and, you know, like, really get up on the blade, and uh, I think that they are not only, like, very usable, um, arguably, the uh, recurve blade is a little less usable, but they're also just extremely attractive. I love the way hinderers look, and I'm happy to see more people, especially knife tubers, talking about hinderers. I know that there are definitely controversies surrounding hinderer and the heat treat on the blade steels, but I've really not had any issues with either of my two hinderers, and I just really love both of them. I love the action, though, especially on this 3.5 inch XM18. It is just amazing, and like I said, the purple is just so nice looking. So, overall, it's a beautiful knife, and it's the XM18 3.5 inch was a blade that I wanted for quite some time, and had to have because it is part of the, at least for me, EDC Holy Trinity, so it had to be here. Like I said, uh, the next one up is the Gavco Nurse. Now, this is an XL Hunchback due to its style, but this is a full custom. And as you guys can see, there is just a lot of hand work done on this blade. You can see that the whole um, spine of this blade is textured quite nicely, in my opinion. Even the inside here is textured. And then, of course, you have that milled handle um, that just is very beautiful. In addition to, there's also a lot of texturing on the clip. It is kind of hard to see, but it is kind of like a rock pattern on here, and uh, it is gorgeous. Not to mention this Timascus is beautiful in its own right. But yeah, this just pale looking purple for the handle, and then this deeper purple and blue clip is just fantastic and absolutely love this. I knew that I was going to get a custom uh, Gavco Nurse at some point in my life and uh, yeah I was really excited to add this one to the collection. Also I will say I absolutely love the fitment on this guy right here. It is just right there. Like You can see how that tip is just right freaking there. It's just so clean. So anyways, that is the Gavco Nurse. It is a grail because it's a knife that I have wanted for some time. And yeah, it just fits me so well. It is a little bit on the small side, but it is worth noting that one of my favorite smaller knives to carry is the Hinder XM18 3 inch version. And it is actually just a bit bigger than the Hinder XM18 3 inch. So it is not terribly big, but it's also not the smallest of the knives that I EDC. So anyways, that is the two kind of grail knives for the EDC. Now let's talk about the watch real quick. So this is a watch that admittedly hasn't been out too terribly long. This is the Apple Watch Ultra. And uh, it is a one that I wanted because when it first dropped, there were a lot of promising claims to it, predominantly in its um, battery life. And that was the biggest thing that I really valued about it was that I was having a lot of issues with my Apple Watch and getting it to last even just 12 hours through a normal workday. And I did think for a while about going over to um, 
other watches, things like the Garmin family of watches, but the primary reason why I didn't want to do that was because these Apple watches, and regardless to what you think of them exactly, the Apple watches do have a really nice benefit that they are very seamlessly integrated with a smartphone. So with all of your apps, they get really good notifications. You can respond to text, take phone calls. And so you do suffer with battery life, but you get really good um, integration with your phone. And that's really half the battle for me, in my opinion, when you're wearing a smartwatch is to have something that truly helps you stay connected with your phone. And, you know, if you get texts, phone calls, you can uh, respond to those. In addition to, this is also cellularly enabled, so it can function as a miniature phone itself, so long as you have that plan set up, which I do myself, so I can make phone calls, I can do text messages and all that kind of stuff independently of my phone. So those are things that other watches or other smart watches out there like the Garmin's don't have. So they're smart to an extent, and that's what I didn't like about them. However, like I said, the Ultra takes a lot of that functionality and retains it, but also gives you much greater battery life. The other reasons why I liked this guy is, and honestly, not too many smartwatches out there are really doing this, but this is a full titanium housing for the body. Then, of course, you do have the sapphire crystal for the watch face, and uh, then, of course, the ceramic on the back. So all of these are extremely hard materials, very scratchy resistant and just tough in general and I think that that makes it really conducive to my lifestyle if you guys know obviously you know I shoot guns play with knives and you know I'm a very outdoorsy person so having something that is tough enough to take the beating that I put on a watch is really important so I like all of those materials that it is made out of so ultimately all of that said it was on my hit list I knew I had to have it and so I definitely had to pick one up. Okay, last one up for Grails is a really solid titanium pen. Now, I know I've wanted a custom pen and honestly have carried pens, uh, kind of like custom pens or EDC pens, whatever you'd call them, since my good old mirror attack. Um, what is this guy? This is the Embassy in brass, and I do really like it, and trust me, this thing writes so smoothly, especially for being a Fisher Space Pen insert. It is a super, super smooth writer. However, it's bulky, it's heavy, and most of all, it is a twist cap kind of setup, so you have to, it's basically like a two-hand operation to get it opened or closed. So I knew from that time on that I wanted something really nice and really smooth. So it came down to um, the smooth, precision pens and I have had a few other different pens like the um, big idea design tie click pen and a few others but nothing really quite really sat well with me until I found these smooth precision or uh, previously ultimate survival gear pens and the tie bolt as it was called was what really sold me because the action is built into the clip so there's no like accidental you know um, activation of the actual pen itself and the thing that got me with these smooth precision pens is they are super slim in hand super lightweight because of their titanium and they have just an impeccable action like i love the action on these things so much and it's crazy that like genuinely if you take this and put it up against or next to or like you hold a plastic like say pilot g2 this in hand genuinely feels as light as those plastic pens but of course this thing is like titanium rock freaking solid and so i knew like i said i had to have one i've handled some of the older generations of the ultimate survival gear pens in person before and i knew that i had to get this one so it was one that I wanted for a while, and it took me a little bit to get because they release them essentially in drops, so even after you order them, you still have to wait, but uh, it was well worth the wait. So, yeah, I really love it, and it was definitely a grail for me. All right, now moving on to the last thing, but not least, the firearm. And this guy right here is a heavily customized Glock. It has a RDS or a Trigicon RMR to be technical and it is just overall what you consider probably a Gucci Glock. And for me this is something that I 
don't necessarily know if I wanted it as Gucci as it ended up being, but this is a firearm that I ended up getting uh, from another individual, very awesome individual, and this guy is just the bee's knees. I really couldn't be more happy with it. I still do need to put suppressor height sights on, which will happen one day for sure when I stop buying tons of knives, but uh, ultimately this guy is just an awesome firearm, and overall uh, it checks off a lot of boxes that I wanted and so I think a lot of people might sit there and say you know oh your grail gun was a Glock it kind of was because I already love Glocks I'm super familiar with the platform and have and have had quite a few of them throughout the years but really what I wanted was a Glock that has a red dot on it and that is set up really really well and that's ultimately what this ended up becoming once again it is you know like an aftermarket slide aftermarket barrel aftermarket uh, red dot, but that is really how I wanted it to be built so that it could be more accurate and more easily shootable for me. I also really wanted to test an RDS uh, or a red dot sight in just everyday carry situations. I partially do think they're also the future for handguns and rifles for that matter. So it was something that I was like, knew I was going to do one day. So once again, kind of similar to a lot of this stuff, I didn't know exactly when I was going to get that firearm or get that watch or get that knife or even pen for that matter. But I did end up doing it and I could not be more happy with this setup as far as an EDC handgun. And that's honestly why, like when it comes down to it, um, you know, when I do my pocket checks and stuff, you know, like why is this um, Glock pretty much in every one of them? I do occasionally carry other firearms, but honestly, like predominantly, this is the firearm that sees most time because I really do love it. So, yeah, uh, that's kind of how it became a grail, and I definitely knew that, like I said, I had to have it at some point because it's just too cool to not have an RDS-equipped um, Glock that has all the cool, you know, like forward slide serrations and fun, awesome setup. So anyways, this is basically my Grail EDC or some of my Grail EDC setup and like stuff, like whether it's tools, knives, you know, watches, accessories, all that kind of stuff. This has been a lot of like things that I look at and like, man, this is what I really want. Of course, I'm going to continue to add knives, guns, uh, watches, pens to this EDC. The grind really never stops and I have a ton of fun with it personally and that's I think the biggest thing for me it's not necessarily that I constantly set new goals after you know achieving something else that I had wanted but it's just a nice steady grind towards hey that looks really cool or I really want to test that out and I end up picking it up and running with it so that's kind of how gra grails form for me but uh, yeah this is some of what it looks like currently and definitely some of my most favorited items for EDC at this point in the game. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.